Hello my foodie friends, welcome back to my channel. I had previously spoken about angle brushes. In fact, I spoke about angle brushes for the face. But today, I thought it would be fun to concentrate on angle brushes for the eyes. So let's have a look at the different shapes, sizes, and hair type that I have for angled eye brushes. We have here on the side some eyebrow brushes. So let us start by the eyebrow brushes. This brush here is made from the water badger. It's a brush from Hakuhodo and I have one here from Kitsu and the one with the blue handle from Kitsu is also made out of the water badger. We can see the difference in the size. The ferrule is obviously a bit larger on the Hakuhodo whereas on the kitsu it's smaller and obviously the hair is a little bit longer and it's also a smaller brush in general. I have found that I am able to use the smaller brush from kitsu to also wing out as a wing um, eyeliner to wing out my uh, my eyeliner. And we can uh, do the eyebrows and then wing out. We can use it flat or with a tip. And same thing for the Hakuhodo, flat on the very sharp edge at the end here or on the shorter edge and as we prefer. There's a slight difference in the hair color but this is due to hair batch um, and obviously it's from two different manufacturer the hair is quite stiff but that is to be expected since it's an eyebrow brush I also have an eyebrow brush from the OEM, from the French OEM, Raphael. Raphael is very well known in the artistry world, in fact, but they also do have a smaller line for makeup brushes. And this angle brush is made out of Kolinsky hair. And comparing it next to the Kitsu, the Raphael, with a black handle has a longer bristle. The hair length is longer. And, um, uh, and this brush is actually amazing for um, flicking out the eyeliner. And the hair is springier than the water badger. But I have also found that I am able to um, do my eyebrows as well as wing out and even stamp on um, uh, powder eyeliner or any eye products as a matter of fact. It's perfect for let's say on the go and on travel you don't have many um, eye brushes this is perfect for lower waterline as well as stamping on eyeshadows on the upper eyelid as well for finer areas, not for blending anything as such. The last eyebrow brush that I have here is a chunky little boy as I call it. It's in fact uh, 
from the manufacturer, from the OEM Kuyudo, um, from the Yoshiki line. The hair is made out of the Japanese um, raccoon dog known as uh, Tanuki. And uh, comparing it to the water badger, obviously it's a much larger and chunkier brush. You can do your eyebrows rather quickly um, without any, it's a no brainer brush. You just do your eyebrows very quickly, rapidly. You can even use the tip to flick out and shape it. It's not for any precision. This is really for when you're in a rush or for people who have perfect eyebrow shapes already and uh, there's no need to go in for finer details. The hair is not as stiff as the water badger I found. It's a tad softer, but with a very prominent snap and it has quite a bit of spring back, whereas the water badger feels a bit more rigid compared to the tanuki hair. Next, let us move on to some other ankle brushes that I would consider um, I could use on my upper eyelid. I have here um, the G515 from Hakuhodo, as well as a uh, pine squirrel hair from Mizuho, and also a pine squirrel hair from uh, Valerie D from the red crystal line and we can see that the Hakuhodo is obviously a much steeper brush the angle is much steeper compared to the Mizuho or the Valerie D and being Canadian squirrel it is on the softer end when comparing the three brushes they all have round ferrules and the way that I prefer to use them is to just dip in shadows and tap it on and you can even use it to swipe with the doe foot. There's a flat doe foot here or I can use the end to blur out um, the shadows. But being Canadian Girl, it will not pick up a lot of product in spite of its softness so this this brush feels very soft and it's very very luxurious on the eyelid the next ankle brushes that i have are from tonsedo and uh, sisley and we have here the raphael and uh, from Valerie D. These four resemble each other quite closely. Um, although I would say that the Sisley has a steeper angle. Um, the Sisley and the Tonsedo actually are made from goat hair. Both have a round ferrule and the size of the ferrule are fairly similar. The Tonsedo is made from tea dyed goat hair which makes it in fact very very soft and uh, flexible uh, to be used for creams and liquids as well as powder. I found that I could layer powder quite easily. I could even blend it with uh, the flat side of the brush and then the very tip I could even use it for the inner corner. This brush is actually quite flexible because I have experimented a little bit and even tried it for concealer and I have to say it works very well for concealer. The Sisley is a tad less soft than the Tonsedo. 
um, it's dyed goat hair and uh, this brush I believe it's a bit rarer to find we can still find it um, uh, on the internet although it's not sold officially from Sicily's website anymore because they have now since converted all of their brushes into the synthetic line but uh, I found this shape very very interesting to add and if you don't have very small eyelids um, this brush in fact could work well to layer shadows as well as to blend and uh, I found even for highlighting if we use the tip for highlighting it does work it's not a as soft these two brushes obviously being goat they are not as soft as the Hakuhodo G5515 and this brush here I have is a little bit bigger than the two previous ones I added it in this section because I thought it's interesting that this brush is in fact made from horse hair it's from Raphael and uh, horse has a little bit more texture than goat for me it's a rather larger on the larger end brush that I cannot use it for my uh, eyelids because I have rather small eyelids but in fact this brush I found it very interesting to use for um, concealer um, I've been able to pat on concealer for larger areas as well as if I use the tip I could in fact use it to highlight so the shape is very interesting in that sense and this brush is relatively cheap and can be found very easily on the internet um, this one here is Pine Squirrel. It's a little bit larger than the Mizuho. And we can see that the Red Handle Valerie D Pine Squirrel um, has a steeper slope and a larger surface area than the Mizuho. The hair, in spite of being Pine Squirrel, is darker than the Mizuho, which is rather more golden and resembles more towards the Canadian girl, but it's not Canadian girl. Very, very cheap brush um, compared to the Hakuhodo G5515, which is, well, you can still find it, but it's a little bit rarer than um, the Pine Squirrel. And this brush, I have found it perfect for under eye. And being pine, um, I know some people find that pine squirrel is more on the scratchier end, but this brush is actually quite, quite soft for pine. Not scratchy at all. Perfect for under eye powder. And along the same size, I took the opportunity to add this two bigger ones as well for under eye powder it's a little bit on the bigger end than the red crystal line from Valerie D the black handle one is actually a Valerie D made from um, Siberian Grey Squirrel the doe foot is very sharp the red handle one that I'm holding is a Takeda it's a Takeda EXS which is a softer end of the goat and um, just slightly below Saibi Goho. We would uh, classify it some sort of higher than Saigoho, but um, a higher end uh, Saigoho. So very, very soft. Not as soft as the Valerie D, 
but very plush at the same time. So if you don't have sensitive skin, you can use it for under eye powder. The Valerie D, I have found that I can also use it for highlighter, the Taurus tip, and as well as the flat surface area. I found that if I did rub or rather drag the product, it would uh, interfere with the, the products underneath. But if we use the tip, it is in fact an amazing brush for highlighter. And the same thing with the Takeda. The Takeda is slightly denser. The fact that it's made from goat hair is denser and a little bit thicker compared to the Valerie D. And on the same note, these are actually Chinese brushes. Um, they are not fude, not made in Japan. And I know presently there is a very big hype going on with Chinese brushes. So I thought it'd be interesting to also include them. These two brushes here are mixed Psycho and uh, Canadian Scroll. The manufacturer classified them as Canadian Scroll, but I have heard that in fact there is a controversy between the classification that the Chinese manufacturers does um, utilize because it seems that there is an inter liaison and a, and a mixture between rather confusion between white Canadian squirrel and white pine squirrel but anyhow these brushes are value for money I think and they are very very interesting um, and this one is actually it does have a rather sharp angle so you can put patent products um, even use it to blend and in inner corners using the very tip here for the inner corners and I suppose even for highlighter it will work value for money and I think it's very very interesting shape and this one here as well it's the ferrule is a bit pinched compared to this one who ha that has a round of ferrule and these two here are from the sable family this these two i have used for as blenders and this one in fact i have even used it as concealer because the little doe foot is so rounded and I found it very fluffy and airy, non-dense, amazing little blender as well as concealing. I have traveled many times with this little brush and uh, I have to say it's uh, definitely value for money. This one here is, I think this is the only shape that I have in my entire collection, I believe. I might have a Takeda, I'm not sure. Um, Feral is very pressed slightly. The shape is very, very interesting because we can see it's rounded here and then it has this rather sharp angle, sharp curve here, and then it goes straight down. So there you go. And lastly, I decided to include these two Valerie D shape. I found it to be rather interesting because I could use them as lip brushes as well, especially for defining the lips and even to wing out um, your eyeliner, to flick your eyeliner. The black one is synthetic 
whereas the other one is made from Kulinski. So there you go, my foodie friends. Um, these are some of the angle brushes I and smaller end angle brushes that I have chosen for today. I hope that you found this video interesting and if you have learned something, please do like and subscribe to this video and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thank you for joining me and I shall see you on to my next video. And before I do go, I would like to thank each and every single one of you who does use my affiliate link. I receive a tiny commission. I do know each and every single one of you who uses my affiliate link and I want to thank you profoundly for deciding to use my link. It does help me. It does support my channel. All my brushes are purchased from my own pocket so it is um, it's a pleasure to know that I have some supporters who actually do want to help my channel to grow thank you so much again and I shall catch you on to my next video goodbye